The more original you are, the harder it is to get other people to appreciate your ideas, right? What's new and exciting to you might be weird and totally illogical to them. And I've learned a few things from research, but also some great champions of ideas about what it takes to get heard when you're speaking up with something that's, that's pretty unfamiliar. First thing is, you might actually want to be more open with the downsides of your idea. I learned about this from Rufus Griscom. Uh, he's a great entrepreneur who uh, had kids and was really tired of all the lies people are told about parenting. And he decided to start a, a website called Babbel that would tell people the truth about all the sleep deprivation and the difficulties that parenting brings, along with the meaning and joy, of course. And he went to venture capitalists to try to get funding for his startup. And he opened with a slide that said, here are the three reasons you should not invest in my company. And I thought he was insane, but he walked away with over three million US dollars of funding that year. And then a couple years later, he goes to Disney because they're possibly interested in acquiring Babel. And he includes a slide that says, here are the five reasons you should not buy my company. And they end up buying it for 40 million US dollars. So what's going on here? Well, what Rufus learned is, first of all, of course, this is attention grabbing, right? There may be a marketing gimmick there. But the way that he presents it, he says, look, I know that my idea is not perfect. And he shows that he's not blinded by his enthusiasm for his own ideas. He's able to take a step back and say, you know, I see, I see some flaws and I'm really trying to work on improving them. And he presents himself as more trustworthy and credible. The other thing he does is he makes it harder for investors to think of their own objections. So if he doesn't list any flaws whatsoever, they're like, you know, I see two big problems with your, with your startup, forget it. Or I don't wanna buy this company, like I see, it's, it's doomed. But when he lists the problems, they have to work a lot harder to say, you know, the, the, what, here are some other issues. And you know, they still wanna challenge him a little bit. So instead of then pointing out just more problems, they say, well, you know, I actually have some ideas about how you could solve those problems. And they start this collaborative conversation where they're convincing themselves that these problems are not so big. And so I think there's, there's a time and a place when you're pitching an idea to say, look, I realize that this idea is not going to solve all the world's problems. I realize that it's imperfect in a bunch of ways. Here are what I see as the three biggest problems. Here are my current thoughts about how to address those. Um, I believe that the strengths of this idea outweigh the limitations, and I'm willing to do whatever I can to address these ideas, and I'd love your thoughts on, on how to do it. And it's a great way to build trust with your audience and also work toward getting good insights on how to solve your problems.